Last week, I went to Las Vegas for CES. I saw a ton of tech, so much that it's tough to fit it all into one video. So here is my roundup of the most interesting real products, not prototypes, that you will actually be able to get your hands on in 2023. First off, we have Netgear Orbi. Netgear was showing off a few new products in their lineup, starting with the new Netgear Orbi RBK863 models. The S model shown here includes an Orbi 860 router and two satellites, and this costs $1,099. The standalone router without two mess satellites costs $429. Now the biggest difference is this one has a 10 gig WAN port. They've also improved the Wi-Fi strength and increased its bandwidth for multiple clients, up to 100 clients total. Now this one is Wi-Fi 6, but they do have another one which is a standalone router, which is Wi-Fi 6E. This one is called the RBRE960. This one costs $600. It features quad band Wi-Fi, a 10 gig internet port, a 2.5 gig ethernet port, and it can connect up to 200 client devices. Now these came out at the end of 2022. Next up was Kingston. Kingston was at the show showcasing their DDR5 memory as well as some minor upgrades to other models. Now I totally fell in love with these new white special edition DDR4 RGB sticks of RAM. They come with 10 LEDs instead of 5 but the only change is the color aesthetic with these so I should really probably focus on future proofing. So I was very interested in the DDR5 Renegade and Beast RGB memory. Both of these now come with white heat sinks and they will be available around March. Now the speeds are also increased as well up to DDR5 7200 and they mentioned that I will still be able to overclock. Kingston also had the new Iron Key USB-C encrypted drive which I did a short video on so you can find that over on my YouTube channel. Let's go check out the HyperX booth. Look at all these keycaps that they are showing off to give you an idea of what they can do. These are made out of nylon. They are 3D printed and then polished and they are compatible with HyperX keys, Cherry MX, mechanical keyboards. Since I'm a big Sailor Moon fan, I would love to see a Moonstick mount for my microphone. They also have custom mouse covers that are 3D printed. The first of these releases will be the Cozy Cat for $19.99 coming out January 2023. These custom <laughs> headphone covers that are also printed by HyperX are so cute. These would go right over the plate on your headphones. The brand new Haste 2 from HyperX is coming out in April. There will be a wired version as well as a wireless version. The wired version will be $59.99 and the wireless will be $79.99. I prefer the white I like how you can see the RGB LED through the wheel. You can customize your DPI. The wireless one is pretty cool. You can switch from Bluetooth to 2.4 and there is a little dongle that comes with it. They're extremely lightweight. So I think this would be really nice for like portable gaming. Now, after visiting HyperX, I ran over to the LVCC to meet up with Qualcomm. They had a private booth with some new demos featuring their in-vehicle technology. That included this gorgeous full-length in-vehicle display, which was also voice controlled. It was really cool to watch some of the commands. I actually noticed that it was really quick to pick up on voice commands. A far, far cry from the incredibly slow entertainment hub that's built into my car at home. So I'm really digging this increase in speed. Also, shout out to whomever designed this car and put binary on the doors. I don't know who did that, but I got a kick out of it. Now, given that I've been on a motorcycle and had an accident, I flew over some girl's hood of her car. It was uh, very scary. I really appreciated Qualcomm's advancements in building safety mechanisms into motorcycles. So they had a motorcycle demo, and this showed how they could send an SOS message to an emergency contact. It could alert you if your motorcycle left a specific perimeter, say if somebody was stealing it and putting it on the back of a truck. And it could also show you when your fuel is low on this really, really nice and handy hub at the very front of the motorcycle. It was very interesting and they actually showed a lot more than what I have time to show you here. 
Now the Snapdragon Ride Flex SOC system on a chip demo was really cool. In terms of security, all of their systems are sandboxed and cloud connections are encrypted. But of course, I would love to learn more about security and privacy when it comes to these connected devices. The displays give a lot of information to the driver. And when I was playing with the dashboard, I again noticed how intuitive and how quick it was in responding to my presses. Hooray for Qualcomm because these things are so speedy. Qualcomm is already working with manufacturers to bring these to market, so I'm super looking forward to seeing these in cars that consumers can purchase. Let's hop over to Sony. Now, an unexpected favorite for me was the Star Sphere from Sony. This is a nano satellite which Sony just launched into outer space. It will allow anyone in the world to reserve small increments of time and take photos of our planet from outer space. Now, I don't have the pricing for the reservations for time, but it will be usable by anyone. It has really simple controls, a 28 to 135 millimeter f4 camera lens capable of 4K video and stills, and tons of technology packed in for GPS, antenna communication, and its own power and solar sensors. What a neat way to introduce the concepts of outer space to regular people, regular users. Giving us the power to control a satellite and take photos is so inspiring and so cool. Now for some gaming. This is one of my favorite topics when it comes to CES. We've got the DualSense Edge wireless controller on display. They did not have one that I could touch and they kept this thing behind a barrier so you really couldn't get close to it, but I used my Pixel 7 Pro to capture some really close up photos of the details. Don't know if I was allowed to do that, but I definitely did. I already got to see the PSVR 2 up close at the MediaTek Summit. So shout out to MediaTek for taking me over to Sonoma to see things like that in person, but now we've got to see it being used by actual humans in gameplay. Now, unfortunately, I was unable to demo it myself because they were fully booked. So hopefully I can snag one in the near future to do a full review. I would love, love to play Horizon Call of the Mountain in VR. Like, can you imagine what that looks like in game? It looks so fun from the demos these folks were playing. So I, I really want to play it. It looks awesome. Let's check out the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. This is brand new, $2,000. It'll come out in March. This one will include Intel Core i9 processor with Windows 11, and it's packing NVIDIA GeForce inside there. So it'll be a next gen laptop GPU. As for memory, you'll get two sticks of 16 gig RAM, 5,600 megahertz DDR5. The storage, will be up to two terabytes via PCIe SSD. The display on this beast is a 16 inch WQXGA IPS display. That's 2560 by 1600 resolution, 240 Hertz with a three millisecond response time, 500 nits brightness, and it also includes Dolby Vision, NVIDIA's G-Sync. As for the ports on here, we have one type C on the left side, along with a type A. On the right side, there's an audio jack. On the back side, there's also a bunch of ports. There's the DCN for charge, type C, that's USB 3.2 Gen 2, display port 1.4, as well as power delivery 140 watt, a type A USB 3.2 Gen 1 and a Type A USB 3.2 Gen 1, HDMI 2.1, and an RJ45 jack. Wi Fi 6E is included in here as well. And the weight starts at about six pounds for this one. As you can see, the keyboard is super fancy. It's a four zone RGB keyboard with a swappable keycap set, and it runs on Legion's Spectrum RGB software. Okay, y'all, check out the Yoga Book 9i. This one features next-gen Intel Core i7 U series processors with Windows 11 for the OS and Intel Iris Xe for the GPU. Memory is 16 gigs and it comes with 512 gigs of storage. This features two, two separate 13.3 inch 2.8K 400 nit displays OLED with 60 Hertz technology. These also have four Bowers and Wilkins speakers and Dolby Atmos, as well as Dolby Vision. As for ports go, this one has three USB type C ports and they have Thunderbolt 4.0 built in. 
Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth 5.2, and this one weighs about three pounds. So here we have the X1 Nano Gen 3. This will be 1650 coming out in April. This will include the next gen Intel Core processor, runs Windows 11. We also have Intel Iris XE for the graphics. For memory and storage, we have 16 gigs DDR5 and up to one terabyte of PCIe NVMe storage. This is a 13 inch display. It is non-touch, but it is 2K. As for ports, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. There's one for audio. It's a headphone and microphone combo jack. There's also a nano SIM port on here as well. Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.1. And my favorite part of this is the fact that it weighs just about two pounds. This thing is so lightweight. It's just a little bit heavier than most phones on the market right now. That is crazy. Check out the new Think Phone by Motorola. This thing packs in a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 mobile CPU. It's got a 6.6 inch POLED display. This runs Android 13 and it can come with either 8 gigs or 12 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs, 256 or 512 gigs of storage. On the back, we have a 50 megapixel sensor. That's an F1.8 and it also has OIS built in. There's a secondary camera. This one is a 13 megapixel ultra wide with a 120 degree field of view. That also includes a macro vision option. It's f2.2. The front camera on here is a 32 megapixel. It's f2.45. It also packs in a 5,000 milliampere hour battery with 68 watts turbo power and 15 watts wireless. So yay, we have some wireless charging in here. I'm super excited to see this. Type C, obviously. And the back of this phone is this really beautiful carbon black aramid fiber case. It also packs in Gorilla Glass Victus for the front display. So the interesting thing about this phone, the one I wanted to really point out to you is this little red button, which totally works with the ThinkPad line. This can be programmed to boot up whatever your specific app is for production and productivity. So in this example, we have the calendar. I'm really excited to be able to test this phone out in person. Let me know down in the comments if you would like to see a full review. Surprisingly in the box, it does include a power adapter and that is a very, very high wattage power adapter. Samsung unveiled the new SmartThings station, which is basically a hub for connected smart home devices, but it also has a Qi charger built in, so you can use it as a charging pad for your phone or other Qi enabled devices. The new Matter protocol is built into this station, which means that it will integrate seamlessly with other Matter smart home products, no matter the manufacturer. How neat is that? Yay, integrated technology. Now LG takes the cake for having the fanciest booth in my opinion. I mean, just look at this entryway. It's so fancy. Y'all, I'm just saying this thing is so pretty, but it wasn't just about a pretty entryway. They also had some pretty swanky new tech to show off as well. They had this micro LED TV, which is 136 inches. It's big, real big. It also has 4K and 120 Hertz technology built into it. The new LG Signature OLEDM is the world's first wireless OLED TV, allowing you to transmit 4K, 120 Hertz audio and video wirelessly from a hub, a little black box, Box that must be in line of sight with the TV. It's also not completely wireless. There's one wire for power, but that's it. They also had this new OLED Flex, which launched about a month ago, but this is the first time I've gotten to see one in real life. It's one of my favorite things from the show floor. This thing is jam packed with all the tech that you would expect from a gaming or entertainment monitor. So it's 4K, 120 Hertz native refresh rate. It includes Dolby Vision and Atmos and HDR10. It has a one millisecond or less response time, G-Sync, FreeSync, smart TV apps for streaming like Netflix, HBO, Max, all that good stuff. Ports for days, but it also flexes from flat to 900R curvature or somewhere in between if you prefer a custom setting. It is 42 inches for the display and it only costs $3,000, but it's on sale for $2,500 if you want to order one. So have at it. <laughs> That's a little out of my price range. 
but boy, this thing is gorgeous. And I can imagine so many ways I could use one of these for editing as well as gaming and entertainment. So my CES 2023 is complete. I did not have a sponsor to take me to Vegas this year for CES. So thank you so much for your support here on YouTube memberships on Buy Me A Coffee as well as Patreon. Special thanks to Martin, David, Nathan, Pedro, and Peter for joining the S'mores supporters this week. Check out my channel for a playlist of all of the shorts that I'm posting from CES as well. If you play them in a playlist, it's basically like watching a long form vertical video and it makes it super easy to watch all of my bonus content from CES 2023. Thanks again. I will see you soon with another review. I have several lined up. I'm so excited to post those this year. I'll see you later. Bye y'all.